This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. On Tuesday, President Obama became the first sitting U.S. president to visit Puerto Rico in half a century. The last official visit was in 1961 by President John F. Kennedy. It is a uh, great experience to fly many hundreds of miles into the Atlantic Ocean, to come to an uh, island and be greeted in Spanish, to come to an island uh, which has an entirely uh, different tradition and history, which is made up of people of an entirely different uh, cultural origin than on the mainland of the United States, and still be able to feel that I am in my country here in this city and island as I was in my country in uh, Washington this morning. President John F. Kennedy in Puerto Rico in 1961. Well, on Tuesday, local officials spruced up the island for President Obama's four-hour presidential visit, dispatching workers to paint Spanish colonial buildings in Old San Juan and to clear the highway of potholes. When Obama disembarked from Air Force One at the San Juan military airstrip, he briefly addressed the people of Puerto Rico at a restricted news conference. We're giving Puerto Ricans the tools they need to build their own economic futures. And this is how it should be. Because every day, Puerricuas help write the American story. Puerto Rican artists contribute to our culture. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but Mark Anthony decided to show up here today. Puerto Rican entrepreneurs create American jobs. Even in the NBA Finals, J.J. Barea inspired all of us with those drives to the hoop. Obama's brief remarks centered on his plans to include the island in federal programs such as health care restructuring. He also vowed to bolster the island's slumped economy and respect any clear decision Puerto Ricans come to regarding the island's political status. During his visit, Obama stopped by La Fortaleza, the executive mansion, to speak with Governor Luis Fortuño and other political leaders. He concluded his visit with an address to a fundraising luncheon at the Caribe Hilton Hotel, where he picked up an estimated $1 million in local donations for his forthcoming presidential campaign. Obama's visit underscored the growing importance that Puerto Ricans will play in the 2012 elections. Although Puerto Ricans living on the island can't vote for president, there are more living off the island, close to 4.6 million Puerto Ricans living in the 50 states, including an estimated 857,000 in the battleground state of Florida. With another 35,000 leaving the island each year, the Puerto Ricans in the Sunshine State could hover just under a million by next year election. For more, we're joined by Maritza Stankic. She joins us from San Juan. She's an associate professor of English at the University of Puerto Rico at the Rio Piedras campus. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Professor Stankic. Thank you so much, Amy Goodman. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you. Talk about President Obama's visit, its significance. Well, it was something like uh, being hit by a—it was like being hit by a tornado. Uh, every the whole place, uh, you know, the whole place. Uh, it, it, it was as if an, a, a giant apparatus descended upon us. Uh, the preparations were extraordinary. There was a lot of uh, cynical comments about how much that uh, kind of money that was spent on preparations could be spent on schools and other other things that are urgently, urgently in crisis right now in Puerto Rico. Um, the fundraiser, which sounds pretty normal maybe to some people, a uh, Democratic Party fundraiser with uh, tickets from 10,000 to 38,500 was by most accounts uh, a, a huge extravagance considering the kind of crisis that Puerto Rico is in. Puerto Rico is in the worst crisis since the 1930s. Um, it was quick. It was scheduled to be five hours. It was actually turned out to be less than that. Uh, I, I, though, uh, aside from it being heavily orchestrated, um, there was one, uh, one aspect of it that was uh, seemed spontaneous, and that was that he briefly met with a candidate of the opposing party uh, to the current governor, Luis Fortuño. And uh, that was, I would say, probably the only really positive thing, uh, noticeably positive thing that, might, that could affect Puerto Rico. Um, how this will affect Puerto Rico beyond the fanfare of yesterday, you know, is yet, yet to be seen. I think people are quite cynical about it. 
Well, as of April, the unemployment rate in Puerto Rico remains at over 16 percent. Uh, the recession that rocked mainland United States started even earlier in Puerto Rico, sent an estimated 365,000 middle-class professionals to Florida. Yes. Um, Obama addressed the island's economic woes in his speech. The aspirations and the struggles on this island mirror those ac across America. So I know that today a lot of folks are asking some of the same questions here on the island, as they're asking in Indiana or California or in Texas, how do I make sure my kids get the kind of education that they need? How can I put away a little money for retirement? How can I fill up my gas tank? How can I pay the bills? Everywhere I go, I see families facing challenges like these, but they're facing them with resolve and determination. You know, these problems didn't develop overnight here in Puerto Rico or anywhere else, but that means we're not going to solve them overnight. But day by day, step by step, we will solve them. President Obama speaking in Puerto Rico. Um, can you talk about the unemployment uh, and the recent wave of immigrants? Many are saying he was in Puerto Rico, though people there can't vote for president, but because Puerto Ricans in Florida and throughout the United States can. Yes, we're in the, we're in the middle of a historic exodus in Puerto Rico. Between uh, 1945 and 1965, nearly a third of the population, nearly a million people left, mostly um, mostly uh, unskilled labor from ag agricultural sectors. This time, the exodus, and it is an exodus, is uh, possibly as high as historic uh, and coming from the uh, formerly educated uh, middle and professional classes. Uh, this is causing uh, its own crisis in Puerto Rico in terms of shortages of surgeons, nurses, et cetera. Uh, and it, they're not going to the traditionally historic places like New York, but more Central Florida, Texas. Um, we haven't heard that much about Texas, but there's a, a lot of migration to Texas as well. And, uh, and of course, especially in Florida, that can shift the demographics of the vote. And quite frankly, um, even though Puerto Ricans are known in, in New York to traditionally vote Democrat, and because of the socioeconomic makeup of Puerto Rico are seen as potential Democrats, the, the votes are seen as up in the air in, in regards to uh, the parties, the Republican and Democratic parties. For example, the Republican Party may use um, hot-button Christian nuclear family-type issues, values-type issues, uh, like abortion and gay marriage, in order to get the Latino vote, not just the Puerto Rican vote, but the Latino vote. That might be the part that might be more uh, leaning toward Democratic. So it's, I think the Florida vote can make a difference, and I think um, it's still up in the air to some extent uh, how they will be voting, um, uh, you, know, they, they, you know, how they will be voting in the future or if any patterns will be established in the future on how they'll be voting. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of the reports said that was the reason Obama came here. In fact, Yesterday, I ran into Puerto Ricans who came from Tampa in a group to Puerto Rico on vacation, timed with Obama's visit on purpose. So uh, there's no question that Florida Puerto Ricans are, are aware of his visit. I want to talk about the status of Puerto Rico, a colony of Spain from 1492 until 1898. It's been under U.S. control since then as a so-called non-incorporated territory. Uh, island residents have voted consistently to maintain ties with the U.S., but there is a vocal minority favoring independence. Uh, yes. Early on Monday morning, 10 pro-independence activists were arrested while taking down signs welcoming President Obama. 20 more demonstrators kept an all-night vigil at a colonial fort in Puerto Rico to protest the president's visit. President Obama did address the issue um, of status in his speech. He vowed to respect any clear decision Puerto Ricans come to regarding the island's political status. Because when I ran for president, I promised to include Puerto Rico, not just on my itinerary but also in my vision of where our country needs to go. And I'm proud to say that we've kept that promise, too. First of all, we've addressed the question of political status. In March, a report from our Presidential Task Force on Puerto Rican status provided a meaningful way forward on this question so that the residents of the island can determine their own future. 
and when the people of Puerto Rico make a clear decision, my administration will stand by you. That was President Obama speaking about Puerto Rico's relationship with the mainland. Can you talk, Professor Stankich, about the independence movement on the island and about the potential benefits and drawbacks of Puerto Rican statehood or being remaining the way they are right now? Okay. Um, yes. Um, the the independence movement is small, but yet very historically important and significant. Uh, they were out in uh, by the hundreds yesterday. It's a very vibrant movement, though very fractured. Uh, I don't think uh, they will ever, ever, ever go away. I think the issue of Puerto Rican independence is like uh, the issue of, say, Palestine and other places in the world where, where um, these things are just not going to go away. I don't think, I, perhaps never. Um, uh, I, I, the, the current governor is a pro-statehood governor extreme right wing, Republican Party, um, it would be, I think, uh, considered to be the ultimate, historically, the ultimate uh, surrender. That's the, way I, that's the way the independence movement would view it, um, to become a state. The benefits of becoming a state, uh, I do think that there, there's a few cogent arguments. One of them is that because Puerto Rico is so densely populated, um, it would have more than more representatives in, in the U.S. Congress than 23 other states. Right now, it has a non-voting resident commissioner who can only lobby and has a lot less power than the other Puerto Rican members of Congress. Um, the, the current st situation, I didn't talk about the unemployment before, but the current status of Commonwealth appears to have run out of gas and has been in decline for the last uh, decade, since the 70s. Uh, the, the, the crisis in Puerto Rico cannot be compared to any state in the United States, as Obama did in his speech. It is far worse. It is uh, noticeable to anybody. Uh, uh, walking down the street in Old San Juan after midnight now, uh, every bench is occupied by homeless people. Uh, crime has skyrocketed. Uh, pretty much, you know, many of my friends now are getting mugged for their cell phones. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, the crisis is profound. Obviously, something has to change. It, in a way, being that I'm a non-Puerto Rican who has been living here for about 15 years, I don't feel 100 percent comfortable advocating for either any status. Uh, the, the country is sharply divided, even within families, on this question. I personally don't expect the next status plebiscite to be much different than the last few ones, um, in which the vote was def almost divided in half between statehood and uh, commonwealth, with a small, less than 5 percent voting independence. The level of poverty is quite something. I mean, um, the highest overall poverty for a U.S. jurisdiction is Puerto Rico. 45 percent of adults, close to 60 percent of children are impoverished.